Right, today's video is all about Everesting. The world record was uh, set, uh, broken by Phil Gaimon uh, this weekend, I believe it was. He climbed it in 8 hours, 4 minutes. You can see on Wikipedia, beating the time by 40 minutes. I know my mate Paul and Van Zwil was trying to get the record. I think before previously it was possible. Um, now I think it's... Um, this is going to be very hard to get um, by most people because this record is unbelievable. All right, so if you don't know what Everesting is, you basically have to climb the amount of Mount Everest, like the same elevation as Mount Everest. So I think it's like 8,700 meters or something. Uh, and you have to do that, obviously, like you can't do that in one go, um, but you do it as reps. So you can see here, this is like a typical Everesting power file um, and height and everything else. So, you know, there's a lot of things that go into this. There's a video I think he made on on uh, how he selected the climb. I didn't watch that, I just find him a bit boring sometimes. Sometimes some of his videos are good, some of them are bad. Um, but this is the segment here, mountain gate to ridge. Now you'll see it's 11%, a, a really high average is very important. Obviously, you know, you climb faster when it's a higher average, like the, your VAM is higher. So that's really important. Um, and that if you, you know, you don't have a high, you like 1300 VAM is what you need from him. And also you think about the negative VAM as well, but we'll go into that later. Um, you know, to do that on a 5% climb, you know, you've got to be going pretty fast, like 27k an hour, and that's pretty tough to do, while here, he's only got to be doing 12k an hour. Um, so, that's the first thing, climb. Longer the better, because you think there's longer, okay, you don't get as much rest, however, you don't have to turn around as much. So you don't have to turn around as much, there's two times, obviously the one at the top, the turn around, it's not really going to waste too much time, but the one at the bottom, you've got to go from like 70k an hour down to like 20 probably to do a U-turn. Um, the other thing that's very important is obviously to find a climb with no uh, residential street. So we can see here that there's uh, it's a residential thing, I believe, when I saw the video he made. And um, there's no intersection. So there's no way someone can come out in front of you. So the only intersection is this here, but he stops before that. So that's um, that's fine. So anyway, that it looks like a perfect segment. I'd say, you know, if it was 2K at 11%, I'd say that is ideal. Um, but this is still pretty good. And the other thing is you don't want any turns. If you have hairpins, you have to slow down. Slowing down on the descent is very important because you've got to, it's an up and down descent. So you can see, so we can see on the up, um, you know, he does 305 watts, 304, 300, th it's basically pretty consistent at 305 watts um, every single lap. Um, so this is a watts per kilo of 4.4 to 4.5, um, according to his weight, 68 kilos, probably was right there. Obviously some laps are worse, some laps are better. Um, towards the end, obviously, you can see the wattage is going down to more like 290, just 4.3 watts per kilo. And on the face of it, to be honest, if you said, well, you, you've got to break your average string record, you could go like, climb at 4.5 watts per kilo. People be like, mate, that's like tempo for most people. But it's a long thing. It's a really long thing. Um, I also think one thing maybe Gaimon could have done better is got easier gears. 78 cadence, I don't think that's probably preferable. Maybe like to climb at 78. But, you know, at the end, he's grinding at 73. I feel like, you know, it, it could be better if he had easy gears. But obviously, that's that's up to him. But so that's one thing the uphill we've considered. So, you know, the VAM you've got to be doing is 1300 VAM, more or less. So you've got to find a climb and do 1300 VAM. Obviously, the steeper, the better. Um, and then the watts per kilo is four and a half for this climb. Obviously, it's been more watts per kilo if it was 5%, slightly less if it was like 20%. But, you know, the, the drag resistance at 12k an hour is, is not much. Um, and then we're going to talk about the downhill. So this is a segment up and down. So we can see here, so you're going 10k an hour, then you do the turnaround and then, you know, he gets up to 49k an hour pretty quickly and he's, you know, peaking at 80k an hour, 87k an hour. That's pretty quick. Um, but then obviously he's got to slow down. So you think here, like if we just do, if we just take a random one where we can try and see the slowing down. Yeah. So if we watch the slowing down here, so he's got to go from 79k an hour, he slams that brake down very quickly to 25k an hour to do the U-turn, and then he's, he's at it again. So, you know, his ears turning, and it's like, you might be like, oh, I'm not going to risk on every turn, but like, if you can save half a second, how many repeats has he done? I mean, it's a lot of repeats, isn't it? Um, we can do the maths here. If each climb is going to get you 360 meters of elevation, you know, that we're talking about, what, 50? No, more than that. It'll be like 150 reps or something, mad. No, more than that. It's 200. I don't know. I can't do math very well, but it's a lot of reps. It looks like, yeah. I don't know why my math is all gone. But, yeah, so it, it is pretty impressive, like, in terms of the the bike handling and slamming the brakes. Obviously, like, I think he has disc brakes, which 
a heavier bike, but then you're not really going to wear out your pads as much, probably. Like on this descent, you're probably not going to wear out your pads, which is good. Well, if you're doing rim brakes, like you are going to wear your, your pads out um, unless they're like brand new. Um, so, yeah, it, it's pretty interesting information. Um, in terms of fueling, I think that's another thing that would be interesting to see what he did. Um, because obviously you need to have bottles the whole time. I think, you know, it makes sense just to bang gels, but one bottle with like water or maybe a carbohydrate mix in there. But obviously you've got to think about weight. You know, you, you don't want to have two bottles because that's 500 grams of carrying every single time. That's going to make a difference. So you want to have one bottle, someone, you know, you, you finish a bottle half an hour, bottle 45 minutes, and then just have, get one at the top and just neck it. Maybe you don't, maybe you'd have more though. Maybe, I mean, if you were clever, you'd have 250 mil on the bottle and just change it every like 20 minutes and then just keep. So you always have minimum weight on the bike uh, because I think, you know, or it depends how technical the descent is, but you probably wouldn't want to do that. So I was going to say down on the descent and then you never have weight carrying up. But I think it's probably not worth it just in case he's, in, in case you crash. But yeah, he, um, yeah, he smashed it. He, he really smashed it. Um, like that's that's 290 normalized. Oh, I ain't going to 290 normalized for eight hours. Is like that's that's big. That's that's really big. And I think that's the thing that people don't realize. Like the climbing itself, four and a half watts per kilo for like I mean, anyone can do that for like an hour. That's not that much. But um, obviously it skews the the normalized significantly because the downhill is so much shorter. So you're actually spending like 75. It's not 50 50. It's more like maybe 80 percent or something. Um, so yeah terms of power curves you can see here it's pretty pretty consistent um no no mental speed that spikes or whatever um but yeah there we go everesting world record if you want to get it got to climb at four and a half watts per kilo for eight hours um yeah it's tough i think could anyone beat this i think it's going to be tough because like world tour guys aren't going to do this because i think realistically they've got bad things to do i think most people when they retire i have this sort of fitness just sack off there aren't many people who do these like amateur challenges and have this much fitness. Um, so I think it would be really tough. I think, I mean, you'd have to train pretty. I'd say the only way you could get it is choose a better hill. If you found like a 5K climb at 10%, no hairpins, which is really hard to find. But if you found a straight 5K climb 10%, you'd get it. I, I think because you just, you'd minimize it. You might only end up have to climb at 4.3 watts per kilo consistently and then you might get it but i mean look his average speed is 20 kilometers an hour for eight hours <laughs> that's eight nine thousand meters of elevation i mean that 19 get out that's fast um so yeah i think it's going to be really tough and obviously the calorific content is mental so but you can't eat too much really because like i guess you would massively carb load but then you're still carrying more weight so i don't know it's complicated for sure but anyway those are the numbers on the doors um and yeah, climb tempo for six hours if you want. Uh, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video on old Phil Um I'm sure someone's going to say that he's doping because, um, you know, that's someone doesn't really like him very much. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. I don't think it's, it's like, you know, it's big, but it's not like, it's not mental. Um, like 290 divided by 68 is the question. 4.3 watts per kilo for eight hours normalized. Yeah, that's pretty tough. But you know, I think I think it's possible um, for someone to do that. Uh, not on on the good stuff for sure. Um, and also, like, yeah, the element of Rome, you could save some weight. I reckon if you had like a full hill climb, it's like that's the other thing. I reckon his bike wasn't like six kilos, or maybe it was. I don't. I need to watch the video and double check. But you know, if you had a super light bike as well, and then you know, the, you could probably nerd out and try and beat him on that. But I think in terms of pure fitness, I don't think as many people are going to beat that. Uh, who aren't pros and pros don't have time for this because it's a bit lame but in their opinion but here's what it is uh and yeah see you in the next one